I'm James Spann. It's the Weather Extreme video for the 2nd of February, Groundhog Day, and also opening night for the Storm Alert Tour across the state. Uh, we'll be in Tuscaloosa tonight on 15th Street at Central High School, very close to that horrible path of the EF4 tornado, April 27th. And, of course, that'll be the focus tonight. Very powerful stories, but if you got kids that are afraid of weather, I recommend you bring them. Information is very powerful. We'll present it in a positive way. And information can go a long way in mitigating fear. Uh, so uh, we expect a lot of people there. Hope to see you there as uh, we all kind of get together as family and talk about what happened last year. All right, let's go to some of the Skycam shots around the Alpha Skycam network this morning. The fog not as bad. Boy, it was awfully bad late last night. That's the Inverness Skycam. Uh, you can see the cars on 280. We couldn't see them last night, so... The fog uh, has definitely improved. Pretty much the same thing on the campus of the University of Montevallo. We could barely see anything last night. And uh, no fog in downtown Fayette. As things are looking pretty good there. All right, big trough in the western states. That will affect us over the weekend. But today we should be in pretty good shape. You know, those numbers just have not budged all night long. Uh, we've been sitting in the upper 50s for about the past uh, 12 to 15 hours. Uh, down in Montgomery, they're sitting at 61. Those are 5 a.m. temperatures, so you know it's going to be pretty mild when you start off the day like that. And around the nation, no really cold air. And it's amazing, you know, the, the continental United States, it is a little oasis of warmth. It is brutally cold over so much of Europe and parts of Asia and Alaska. You've seen all those numbers. Uh, the, the cold wave in Europe is just uh, it's horrible. So we're blessed. There's our watch warning map and a lot of fog around the nation this morning including uh, all 67 Alabama counties under a dense fog advisory. But again, the fog is certainly not as bad as it was late last night. The uh, big headline, it's the uh, winter storm watch out there for the heartland and a blizzard watch for parts of Nebraska. Up on the convective outlook uh, today, the standard slight risk over parts of the Texas panhandle up into adjacent sections of Oklahoma up into southern Kansas. Day two tomorrow, the risk moves east and includes Dallas-Fort Worth. Texarkana, places like that. And on day three, which is Saturday, the uh, low-end 5% severe weather chances just west of here. Uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, and some of the adjacent states. And again, I would say the severe weather possibilities here for the weekend are very small, as you'll see. Rain for the next five days, valid through Monday evening. Bigger numbers off to the west. And around here, amounts of about one inch with maybe heavier totals near the Mississippi border. Let's look at the modeling. This is the uh, GFS, the 06C run, valid at uh, uh, 12 noon today. There's your trough in the west. Down below that, we are quiet. Upper 60s are likely. The GFS is showing 69, the sky becoming partly sunny. Tomorrow, you see how the snow begins to crank up over uh, Colorado and Nebraska and northwest Kansas. And around here, the sky becomes cloudy. There could be a few showers late in the day, but most of the day should be dry. And again, very mild, upper 60s, maybe 70 in spots. Saturday, as we start the weekend, got the big upper low over the nation's heartland. And down below that, we'll certainly mention a chance of showers and storms. I don't think it rains all day, but it could rain at any time during the day. Uh, stay, stay mild, highs in the 60s. And Sunday, the moisture axis stays in place. And again, that would suggest a good chance of showers, maybe some thunder, but obviously no severe weather with a look like that. And we'll go to Monday of next week, and again, it's kind of moist. We'll mention a chance of showers, but obviously, if this is right, the coverage of the rain would be less. And we note the European is also looking a little drier, at least it's faster. It's got that big batch of rain moving out of here maybe Monday morning. So we'll maintain the chance of lingering showers on Monday of next week. And we'll go to Tuesday, and uh, dry air tries to nose in here, but... Uh, obviously the colder air well to the north. In fact, this would keep us in the low 60s based on those thickness values. And now, Wednesday, the moisture surges right back in here with more rain. So if this is right, we just get that one-day break from rain chances on Tuesday, and it comes right back. We'll check the European. It's not as aggressive with the moisture return on Wednesday. But I think we probably do need to go ahead and mention a chance of showers. Then Thursday of next week, the GFS shows the heavier rain moving off to the uh, east a week from today. Let's check the end of the forecast. This is the 17th. No cold air, if that's right. You know, you need that big western ridge pumped up there to tap any cold air, and it's just not, not in existence. And that looks quiet and mild. 
And there's the North Atlantic Oscillation. The ensembles, most members of the ensemble there keep it above the positive line. And again, until we see that thing begin to spike negative, like we've talked about for months, it's just going to be hard to get any really, really cold air down here for any extended period of time. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here tomorrow, uh, due to the travel schedule and the storm tour, we can't cra- uh, we'll not be able to crank out one later today. So next one tomorrow morning by 7 o'clock. And again, we hope to see you in Tuscaloosa this evening. Central High School for Storm Alert 2012. It kicks off at 630. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.